everyone, I'm Brandon. I'm Siobhan. And we are with M.I. Gardner and our business, Honeydew Homestead. So both of us work for Luke at M.I. Gardner. I do the customer service emails, so you probably talked to me at some point. And Brandon helps with mixing the trifecta and packing the orders. Today, Luke asked us if we can show you guys how we do our microgreens. Yeah, so let's take a look. So welcome to the grow room. Our grow room actually started out very small. It's here in our basement. Um, it started out as a little 10 by 10 room and we have expanded to over half the size of our basement already. We've actually only been doing this for about a year, but expansion happened very, very quick. So microgreens are actually quite easy to do. However, here in our grow room, we have everything protected with Visqueen. Visqueen keeps our basement divided to keep all of the debris and normal home things on the outside of the grow room which keeps everything in here very clean and sanitized. So as you see here, we have just a very basic fan. Um, the reason why we have our fan in here is we need a lot of airflow. Your crop, even your crop out in your garden, loves air. It needs that airflow. It also helps to make the greens stronger. Here are our shelves. These are just very basic shelves actually from Lowe's. You can get them at any hardware store, even Walmart. We have these set up that way we can do multiple microgreens for our larger orders. We also have a dehumidifier in here. Now again, we talked about with the fan, oxygen and airflow. Now since we do so many microgreens here in our grow room, all of that moisture can cause a big problem with mold or mildew. Now if we talk about that stuff specifically with plants, you get something that's called dampening off. So again, with us being on a larger scale, a schedule is very, very important to us. It lets us know how long we need to start sowing our seeds for the restaurants or customer that we are going to deliver for. Most of our seeds are mature at about 10 days, but some of them that have thicker hulls, such as a beet, needs to be sown much earlier. It might also need something extra like being soaked in water for a day or two. Now again, this is how we do it as a business. Now we're going to get into how you can do it just at home, which is actually the best part. Let's break it down and how we actually grow. First, we have our trays. Now, just like building something, the foundation is very important. However, these are just basic nursery flats. Here, we have one that has no holes, and then we have one with holes. You can do it in just a normal, basic flat with no holes. However, I find it a lot easier to take one with holes and put it inside of the one with no holes. This allows me to water underneath of where the greens are growing so the roots can suck up the water just like your grass out in nature after it rains. Step two, your growing medium. We use coconut core. We order it in these nine pound blocks, which are literal blocks. We like it like this because it's easy for us to store it. We can have a lot of these in the grow room and it expands to a whole lot. One of these blocks can actually fill up an entire wheelbarrow once it's prepped right. So how do we get it from this to this soft, fluffy growing medium? You just soak this block in water and it completely expands in a matter of minutes. As soon as it starts soaking up that water, it starts expanding. Then I just go in, break it up, and it turns out just like this. And if you don't know, coconut core is just the husk of a coconut. Not only that, but this stuff holds water very, very well, and it is very loose. That allows the microgreen roots to grow through with ease without struggling. One last benefit is this is completely sterile. If you were to go out into your garden and scoop up some soil to use, it might have pests or mildew or other things that can cause issues while you're trying to grow your microgreens especially if you have more than one tray growing close together, that can spread disease and dampening off very, very quickly. Before we put the seeds down, we need to moisten our soil. So here we go. 
So the reason why I pre-moisten the soil is so that the seeds can actually lay down more even and they're not just bouncing around on top of something that is dry. They will actually stick wherever they land. Now these are some of the seeds that we like to use. The reason why we like to use these ones is because they all have about the same growing time. So if I'm going to be getting these out to a customer but they're ordering different kinds of seeds, I can ensure that they are all going to germinate and mature at the same rate or at least very close to. These are all also very, very delicious greens to eat. So my personal favorite is kohlrabi. It's just very unique. The color is gorgeous. It comes out this beautiful purple. So my eyes are already eating before my stomach does. And then when it gets to that palate, it's just absolutely sweet, crunchy, and delicious. Another fan favorite is a simple spicy salad mix. It has a mix of six different greens. It includes bok choy, kohlrabi, radish, um, and a few other ones as well. Now, I know it looks like just your seasonings right there in the kitchen, However, we really like using these bottles after they're completely clean and sterile because it makes it very easy just to shake the seeds right out onto your soil. Now let's talk about what makes a good microgreen seed. One of the main criteria for us is that we can actually sow all of our seeds very tight together inside of this flat. Something that helps is that they grow on a nice stem so they come straight up and all of these greens can grow very tight together. You're gonna have something that comes out almost like a bed of very nice grass, very close together, so you can make more bang for your buck and fill up all of this space. Now, you don't want to grow something like a lettuce because as it starts to grow, it can get kind of bulky and crazy. And that flavor profile might not be there either. That's a huge reason why you want to experiment and research the kind of green that you're growing. Now that you have your trays, your soil, moisture in your soil, and you've picked out your seeds, it's time to sow. Again, we're using these shakers because it allows us to evenly sow our seeds. And we just shake it out just like seasoning. As you see here, we're sowing our seeds very close together. Remember when I talked about the benefits of picking out your seeds, this is that exact reason. Even though it looks very heavy, all of these will be able to grow into a very nice vegetative mat. Again, talking about the benefit of sewing them nice and tight together, you're going to get a nice, beautiful mat just like this. After our seeds are sown, I like to add just another spritz of water over top. After that, now we wait with germination. Now our seeds like to mimic as though they are growing out in nature. How does a seed grow in the garden? Well, we put it in darkness because it's under soil. So we want to mimic that same thing. We just take another tray that doesn't have any holes and put it right on top. Another thing that our little seeds like is a lot of weight. Again, we're trying to mimic what it's like outside in nature. They have weight of soil on top of them. Our seeds can handle about five pounds, a little bit more of weight. I just use the seed bag that we order all of our seeds in because this is five pounds. It fits right in the tray nice and even and distributes that weight all the way across. You don't have to use a seed bag. You can use books, you can use your actual workout weights. Whatever it is, go ahead and try to weigh it on a scale before you do it. After about two to three days, you'll already start to see that germination and growth happening. I can actually leave our tray just like this until I start to see the greens pushing up all of that weight that is when I will remove the top. 
and you will have your greens just like this. You see that they are yellow, they haven't had any light yet. This is four days of growth for this specific tray right here. Again, this is our spicy salad mix. You see how even though there's six different seeds in that mix, they're all growing at that same rate. In fact, you can't even tell which green is which. So now that they're still pale because they haven't had any exposure to light yet, we're going to put them under light. These are just your normal LED shop lights that you can get at any hardware store. When greens are this young, they don't need that full light spectrum. They are perfectly fine with any kind of light. Our lights can move. As you see, they're on chains over here on either side. You want to get your light as close as possible to your greens since it is just artificial light. After they're at this stage, congratulations, your greens are ready. Let's harvest them and eat them. So now that Brandon shown you how to actually get to this point, I can show you how we package them after we're ready to sell them or eat them. So we really like to get as close to our coconut core as possible so that we're getting as much of the greens as we can. Don't want to leave anything behind. So for us, since we do sell our greens, we use two different sizes of containers. This is an eight ounce container. So for this, like we'll sell one of these for $5 at the farmer's market, or we have a 24 ounce container and um, that one's $10 when we sell our greens. Another great thing about the microgreens is that they do store very well. We don't really tell people that they'll keep for between a week and a half to two weeks, but we've had people that have had theirs up to three weeks even. You just want to store them like you would any other leafy greens, so keeping them packaged up nice and tight. And you can also add like a damp paper towel to keep them moist, and that'll also help prolong their life. So once they're all packaged up, when we're at the market, we do have labels. I have a thermal printer that I use, so I can print out my labels anywhere. And so I'll just get whatever sticker corresponds to whatever I've packaged and put it on there for the small ones. When we have our larger containers, we do have bigger labels. So this is better for when people are getting a mixture of different greens. We can just pop that on and circle or highlight whichever greens that they have inside their mix. So you're probably thinking, okay, I've done all these things. I've used my greens. Now I'm left with this. What do I do with this? So for us, we actually give the rest to our bunnies. Uh, since we do keep rabbits, they love to dig in here and get all the extra little bits that are left over. Chickens do the same thing. We've actually had a few customers who will come by, we'll trade eggs for our leftovers, and their chickens absolutely love it. Then after that, we compost all of this. But you can also um, recycle, and if you like bake it down, you can like reuse it and make it sterile again. But because the greens have such tight root systems, that's a little difficult, so we do tend to just compost this. So let's go ahead and go upstairs and have some lunch. Well, thank you guys for coming along and learning how to grow microgreens. We really hope that you enjoyed it and that you learned something today. Yep, and you can definitely find us on TikTok and Facebook at Honeydew Homestead MI. All of our links will be in the description. And as always, grow big or, or go, go home. home. So that was a ton of fun. I am so glad we got to come on this journey to visit Brandon and Chabon. They are awesome people, love what they do for MI Gardener. So make sure to thank them in the comments box down below. This was a really special time for me to just share with them on their journey of how they grow microgreens and how they're growing their own small business, which I think is super, super cool. But uh, they actually made me a treat as well. So uh, I figured give it a shot on camera and um, give it a taste together. So hopefully you guys try growing microgreens because they're pretty, pretty cool. Whoa. Wow. Love it, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. As always, hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll catch you guys on the next episode. Take care.